I've been waiting for the last few months for the Philips Hue 8K sync box to come out and now it's available in the UK. I've gone and bought one along with an ambient light strip and a Hue bridge. So in this video I'm going to show you the setup process for all those three things as well as the integration into Home Assistant and a nice automation to get that to start up as soon as you switch the TV on. So if that's something that would be of use to you, then stick around and watch the video. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, my name's Paul from Project Smart Home. As I said in the intro, I've been waiting patiently for the 8K version of the Hue, Philips Hue um, HDMI sync box to come out and it's available now in the UK. So I've bought one along with the ambient strip for my 55 inch uh, LG TV and the Hue bridge as well. All of my other Hue devices are integrated natively into Home Assistant using Zigbee. But to get this working, I'm using the Hue Hub. So what I'm going to do is go through the unboxing of all of those three items. I'll take you through the setup and the configuration of everything from start to finish. So you can follow along um, to just to see how um, how easy it is to do, um, and then I've got the integration into Home Assistant as well. So I'm integrating the Hue bridge into Home Assistant, so I can control the lights, and then I'm also integrating the uh, Philips Hue sync box into Home Assistant as well using a hacks add-on specifically for the sync box, and that works really well as well. And then to finish it off, I'll go through an automation for how you can get um, the, the um, Hue sync box to turn on automatically and the lights to come on automatically when you turn the TV on. So hopefully that'll be of use to you all. Um, I'll see you in a bit, thanks. So what I'll do now is take you through the unboxing of the Philips Hue gradient light strip and the installation onto the TV to get to a point where it powers on and it's working. So in the box some basic instructions along with in my case a 55 inch uh, gradient light strip which I'll show you uh, the installation of in a minute. In the boxes that come with it there's what, one, two, three, four, five clips that hold the gradient light strip onto the back of the TV and I'll show you the installation of that in a minute. And then it also comes, as you would expect, with a power pack and power supply for the gradient light strip itself. Um, the plug's got a UK plug and a European plug on there as well. So uh, there's some instructions here on how to get the or how to place the brackets for the light strip. So it suggests here you place them five to ten centimeters from the edge of the TV screen. I opted to place them five centimeters from the edge, which seems to be working fine. So there's the three clips across the top installed five centimeters from the edge. Now, because of the shape of the back of my TV screen. I've got some problems with the brackets I'll show you in a minute. So I kind of assumed that I'd have to measure the length of the light strip to find the middle, but you'll see here, there's like a white triangle in the middle of the screen there. That needs to go in the middle of the central bracket at the top of your screen. And then you just dress the LED light strip around those brackets and goes on really, really easily. So because of the shape of the TV or that, the, the panel on the back, I've had to do some creative sticking to get the um, brackets holding the uh, LED strip in place, but it seems to be fine. I didn't want to obscure the HDMI connections. So I've stuck on the power pack to the back of the TV, plugged the LED strip into one side, and which you can only put it on one side, and then that connector that goes from the power pack to the plug only goes in one way around, so make sure you get it the right way around. So unfortunately, I put the TV in place, but unfortunately my LED strip didn't work properly, it only kind of worked up to the corner. Um, so after some messing around with it and reading on some forums, I came to the conclusion it must be broken, it must be duff. 
So I've sent it back and I've got a replacement one now that uh, is installed and working. But this one is obviously a problem, um, but I swapped it out, no problem at all. So now we've got the ambient light strip uh, unbox set up, installed. We need to get the uh, Hue bridge set up as well. Uh, I don't have a Hue bridge set up at the moment because all my Hue bulbs are integrated natively into Home Assistant using ZigBee2MQTT. So I needed to buy a hub um, to get this solution to work. So once it's unboxed, plugged it in and got it connected to the network and then obviously needed to go along and install the Hue app itself so we can get that connected to the network and get the uh, new ambient light strip added in. So once you've installed the app, you can go through the setup. Um, I'm logging in, I chose to log in using my Google account, but I guess you could create your own account um, already unless you've already got one. You may already have this app set up. If you do, then just skip this step and you can move on to integrating the uh, sync box into the solution. So you just have to go through, um, put your name in, agree to the terms and conditions, and then we can sign in and start getting things set up. I've just gone with the default settings. So I've pretty much said yes to everything, yes to all the marketing stuff, and can we reach out to you and tell you about some more products that we're gonna try and sell to you. Um, and now we need to add the bridge to the app itself. So um, I actually made the mistake of moving my bridge into the loft and then setting this up. So I was up and down in the loft pressing buttons on the bridge while I was going through this process to set up. So make sure that you're kind of in a position where you've got easy access to the hub as you're setting it up because you will need to press that button on the front of it at various points during the setup. Setup of the hub, sorry, setup of the bridge and set up of the lights as well, and for the um, sync box as well. Now I couldn't discover my lights um, using the tool, so I had to get the serial number off the back of the little power pack, if you remember, that is stuck to the back of the TV. There's a like a six digit number or something on the back of there. But once I put that in, I did another search and it detected it um, properly that time, so just something to consider as you're going through the um, installation. So it's assuming that you haven't done any setup of your gradient light yet so um, it's just going through a, um, a quick video setup guide but as I said earlier just stick those brackets about five centimeters from the edge of the TV and it should all work. And that's it you've now got the app up and running and the lights integrated. Let's move on to the next section. So the final part of the puzzle then is to get the exciting bit installed, which is the brand new 8K Philips Hue sync box. So obviously it comes with a sync box in there. There's four HDMI ports on the back, USB port, power, and obviously the output to the TV. Um, at the moment, I've only got my Google TV dongle connected into HDMI port 1 but I will get the um, games console Xbox set up on there eventually as well. Um, so it comes with HDMI cable which is useful, power pack um, with European and English plugs as well. So once you've got that plugged in um, to the TV and to the power, then you can go through the process of getting it set up. So you go into the Hue app, um, select the icon in the middle at the bottom and start adding the HDMI box to the app. So it does this over Bluetooth and searches for the device. So again, I had problems um, with this, which I'll come on to in a minute. 
So I don't know if it was the lighting in the room or the camera or what, but I just could not get the QR code to focus. So I ended up having to use the code, another five or six digit code that's on the back of the uh, sync box and type the code in. And once I've got that, it discovered the box. And then I'm going through the process of adding the device to my IoT network, which is the same network that all my other devices are on. To then press and hold the button on the front of the sync box carry out some updates on the box, make sure it's up to date, and again, <laughs> pressing the button on the bridge, so again, I had to run up into the loft and, and do that. Um, and then you can then go through and set things up. So as I, as I just said, I've only got my Google TV connected to HDMI 1 at the moment, so that's the only device I needed to configure, but if you've got others, then you can add them in to the relevant HDMI ports. Yeah, so that's the um, that's where you configure the sync settings in the bottom middle option. So mode TV, you can change the brightness. 100% brightness is far too bright in my opinion. I think I've got mine set to about 55, 60% at the moment, and that seems to be okay. If it's any brighter, then it starts to annoy people watching. It's too distracting, but you can play around with that yourself. And what you need to do is um, create yourself a TV area. Um, so again, I've only got the one light strip in my TV area at the moment. So I guess if you've got other lights around the place, you can choose the locations and the heights that they're at. And then you've once you've created that TV area, you add it to the sink part in that bottom right hand corner. And then press the button and now that's activated and it will run. So this is now watching TV with the sync in place. I think this is at the point where I had it still set to 100% brightness, so it's, it's quite bright and as I say, some people found it quite distracting in the house and I, I agree. So I've dropped down the, uh, the brightness to about 55-60% at the moment. So it looks quite effective, but obviously you need to see what works best for your room. And that's it. I'm really, really pleased with the outcome. So what I'll do is move on to next is integrating the um, the Hue and HDMI boxes into Home Assistant so we can do some nice automation around it. So now we can go on and start adding the devices into Home Assistant. So um, as you can see, Home Assistant has detected automatically the hub um, and lights, so I can just go through and configure that now. And then in true Philips Hue fashion, I now need to press the um, button on the bridge, which is up in the loft, so I'll run up and do that, and then when I get back, it should be working. Um, so it's detected three things. One is the bridge, one is the light strip, and the other is the room within the Hue app called Living Room. So it's detected the room as well. So those are the three things that you can see that you can see on the screen there. So we should now have a, a new Hue integration in Home Assistant. So it says it's got two devices. Uh, it's got the light strip and the bridge. And the third object there, as I said, is the Living Room object. So I should now be able to control my lights through that application. So a little bit of a view of the entities that it's installed, the TV area it's picked up on, the living room, the light strip, and the Zigbee connectivity for the loft and living room. So the next integration I want to do is adding the Hue Sync hacks integration so if you've got home assistant um, you need to make sure you've got hacks installed and then you'll be able to go along and choose the Philips Hue Play HDMI sync box um, have a read of the instructions and documentation make sure you're happy with what you're installing and then you can download and install that version so obviously uh, if you've done anything with hacks before you'll know that after the install it does 
require a restart of Home Assistant. So we'll do that before we move on to do anything else. So once um, Home Assistant's restarted, we can then go back into settings, integrations, and then configure the sync box because it's automatically detected it on the network, on my IoT network. So I can configure that. So I have to press and hold the button on the HDMI play box for three seconds usually. It says a few seconds, but for three seconds it says in the documentation. You can select the area that you've got your box. So in my case, it's the living room as the location. And then that is integrated. So you've now got the hue Philips Hue integration and the sync box integration. It's one device and 17 entities. So you've got the control, so you can control the brightness, HDMI port intensity, power the device on, get link light sync working, um, and select your entertainment area. So there's quite a lot that you can do and quite a lot that you can see in diagnostics. So it's quite handy that all that's now available in Home Assistant. So what I've done is created a couple of automations for switching on the HDMI sync box. So as soon as the TV comes on, then the box will start syncing the lights. So I've got two, one for on and one for off. So I'll talk you through those now. Um, because I've got my Google uh, integrated with Home Assistant, I'll tell Google when I go into the Lounge Torch TV, I'll turn Google to turn the TV on. And what it'll do is it'll switch on the TV socket. And that's what then initiate, initiates this routine or this automation. But equally, what you could do is base this on once your um, Google TV or your Apple TV or whatever um, smart TV app that you're using starts playing then it could turn it on. I did try that but it seems to be a little bit inconsistent in my installation so when my Google TV is playing it doesn't uh, Home Assistant doesn't automatically pick that up quick enough it seems to be a bit hit and miss I've decided to do it this way but there's there's lots of different ways you could do this. So essentially, when I tell Google to turn the TV on, that's the trigger. So the um, the TV socket, so that's a smart socket that the TV's plugged into. Um, mine's a light wave socket, so it's actually installed into the wall, which is a bit nicer than having a plug. Um, so when that socket is switched on uh, and the living room automations are on, so I've got um, a toggle switch in my living room dashboard so if for some reason I want to turn all the auto automations off, then I'll turn that toggle switch off as well, which is quite handy sometimes. So it wants to make sure the automations are on, using the state of on. And then I've, again, this has been a bit of trial and error. So when you do this for yourselves, you may have to do some tweaking to make sure that it's doing what you want it to do. Um, so I've got a delay of three seconds just to wait until the sockets come on, the TV's powered on, and then what happens is I turn on the uh, Google TV Chromecast device. So that then turns on, so it's in an on state, and then another delay for three seconds. And then once the TV's on, um, I can then turn the light box on so there's the sync box light sync entity that I'm turning on so if I just flick back to um, 
Let's see if I can do it from this one. Saves me some time. So if I go into integrations again and go to the HDMI sync box device. So this, this is the uh, entity that I'm turning on. I'm not sure I'll be able to do it at the moment because the TV's not on. I can, there you go. So by turning that on, it powers on the device as well. But what actually happens is when your TV turns on, and your Google TV turns on, the sync box powers on as well because it, I guess it um, registers there's, there's um, input coming in from the Google TV. So that, that makes sure it all comes on and as soon as you start watching TV, then it's, it's syncing. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. And then when the socket the TV socket is switched off um, so um, a couple of things will trigger this so I can either tell Google to turn the TV off and it'll turn off the socket and this routine or this automation will run or if someone's just pressed the off button on the Google TV remote the TV will turn off and then I've got another automation that detects if the power from the, the power consumption of the TV drops below 20 watts. I know it's off, so then the socket gets turned off as well. So um, when the socket's turned off, we need to make sure that the uh, room automations are on in my case, you don't have to do that. Um, then because potentially it's dark, in fact, what I should do is put a time or some sort of um, uh, lux sense in here but at the moment um, it's turning the TV light the sorry the ceiling lights on in the living room and um, so we don't get put into complete darkness but obviously that only needs to come on if it's a certain time of the day uh, it's then turning off the sink box so that same switch I mentioned earlier and then it's turning the light strips off as well and it's turning the media player so the Google TV Chromecast thing TV Google TV device off as well so it's then in the position that the on automation will work with no problems at all um, probably lots of different ways you could do that but as I said I'm using the trigger as the um, as the start of this routine and uh, I've had this in place for a few days now and it seems to be working quite well hopefully that was useful Thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, it's been a long time coming. I've been waiting to buy one of these sync box for a while, but I wanted to wait for the 8K version just to, so it gives me a bit of future proofing. Um, annoyingly, I got rid of my Hue Bridge, the existing one I had for my Hue lights uh, maybe a year or so ago because I've migrated all of my hue lights bulbs and things into natively into um, home assistant so I've had to buy a hub for that um, so it's my understanding you need the hub obviously the ambient light strip and the um, sync box to get the solution working it's very cool um, everyone in the family thinks it's great and loves it so far um, the integration into Home Assistant is particularly useful, so we can automate the uh, sync box coming on and starting to sync those colours through as people are watching TV without, um, without the device having to be switched on manually. So that integration works really well. And um, I just happened to look for the Hacks integration for the sync box, so I'm glad, uh, I'm glad that's there and available. So thank you very much for, for making that available. Um, hopefully the video was useful. Thank you for watching. If you've got any comments um, or any thoughts on how things could be done differently or how you're using these integrations, then I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you've enjoyed the video and found it useful, then please like and subscribe. That'll help me out and the channel out. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the video. Thank you. Bye.